Hello everyone, welcome back again to Netcode Hub channel. In this lesson, we are going to facilitate on how to deploy your ASP.NET Core Web API to Azure App Service with the use of the Visual Studio. So we are doing everything in the Visual Studio. That's so awesome. You know, when you create your API and you want to have public access, you have to put it online for people to have access to. So you want to now move from local from a computer to the web. And you know, Azure offer us a free service that we can actually publish our web API to it, including the Azure database as well. So in this lesson, we're going to have a look on that. So we first have to create our web API. So here, I assume you know how to create your web API. You have to create your services and your um, controllers and everything. So example is what I've run on the screen. Like you see, we have this simple um, controller here for a separate project. Now with this uh, API, this I want to do, I want to just host this online. So if you check the URI here, it is from the local host, meaning aside from this my machine, no one can have access to this. But we want to put it uh, globally so that everyone can even have access. Even you, we can have access to this API. In such case, how are you going to do it? That is what we're going to have a look today. So let's see. Now, first of all, what you have to do here is we have to go to this. That's our project. Now with this project, we see from here, I have my database connection here. And in this, we let's stop this. So we have to go to our project. Now right click on the solution and I can go to publish. And that's going to be the project title and I click on publish. So you make sure you are connected to your internet as well. Now because you're gonna have this as a pop-up. Now as you can see from the title, it is published. So where do you want to publish to? We select this Azure and I will click on next. Now you see we have a lot here. So it is asking us to a specific target that you want to use. And as you know, I'm using Windows. I'm gonna choose on this Windows and click on next to move on. So from here, you have to sign into your Microsoft account. So if you're not having one, it means you have to create an account, either Outlook or Hotmail, you can create one. Now when you come here, you can see we have this subscription and that's the Azure subscription one. So this is an auto automatic one. So you can see we have subscription name and that is the, the name selected over here. And the next thing to do here is we are going to create a service. So you can see here, we are not having any instance. So for this, we have to click on this create new to create a new instance of the service. So here you can see we have this pop-up and now it has given us a, a name that you want to use. So this patch and we'll ask, you see this is an auto magically selected. And when you come to the next step, you can see we have a resource group and a hosting plan. We have to first create a resource group. Resource group actually organizes all your resources in one group and give it a name. So Let's see, let's click on the new resource group. And then there is a resource group here. So we can still add this. And let's say this is a dispatch ambulance API. We have the number right there, the resource group is okay. And now when it comes to the hosting plan too, we want to get a free one. So we have this plan. And as you can see from this location, you can choose a location over here. And aside from choosing this location, so let's the default one. Then here, we want to use the free version. So click on the free version and I click on OK. So you have a resource group created and that's the resource group here. We have a hosting plan also selected. And now the next thing to do here is to click on create. So you can see it's going to revalidate everything. And I wait for this resource group and now this session to get created. So after successfully created, you can see you're going to have this page and now the app that you created, the service that you created has been automatically selected. You can decide to create new one or use the same one that you've created. So we're going to click on that as you see, and we're going to click on next. So here 
we're going to talk about API management. But for now, we're not going to talk about API management now. Maybe you can talk about this later on and how to integrate API management in your API service that you are creating or uploading. So let's skip this for now and then click on finish. So we wait, as you can see from here, it is creating a profile for us. So let's wait for our profile to get created. So you can see that it is now created successfully, as you can see from here. So let's click on close. Now we are in, so let me just close this up. So we are in here. So from this end, you can see that it has detected some dependencies. And that is the first one is we have the Azure API management. And the second one here, you can see we have SQL Server database. So we have database that is the back end of this and we have to connect this to the API or the web service as well. So let's click on this and as you can see from here we have connect. So let's click on this connect and I can see we have this pop up open. So what I'm going to choose, you make sure we choose an Azure SQL database. So we select this and I click on next. So in here, you can see we have an SQL database and we have to create a new instance of this SQL database. So we do that by clicking on this create new instance. So as we are in here, we have a new window and now there's a resource group. So as you can see from here, we have the same resource group created and uh, we have to use that. We can decide to create a new resource group as well. But here, you're going to maintain this resource group that we created earlier on. And our database server, we have to create a server. So let's click on new to have our server selected. Now this is our server name. So as you can see from here, we have a dispatch ambulance.api db server. Okay. It's the location. And I have to pass in the administrator username and password as a confirm password. So let's do that. When you're done with that, click on OK to move on with it. So when you're done, then you click on create. So as you can see from here, everything is intact. So click on create to get your account created. That's right. So it is now ready. And I'll let's select a uh, database and I'll click on next. Okay, so you can see we have our connection string value. And we have our database connection name. So we have to pass in our connection um, string name. And as you can see from here, there is it requiring our username and also our password. So for username, I think it is Azure. So Azure database username. And now the password, I just have to pass in my password that I use. So after that, then that's what I'm going to do. Just click on. You have to now go there and I'll choose a connection string. That is a default one like that. And the next thing to do is click on next. And as you can see from here, we have this project changes for dependencies being added or configured. So all these have been added. So the next thing to do is we have to click on finish to get it finished. Okay. So it is connecting. Now let's wait while the connectivity is in process. And let's just, as you can see, it is installing these packages on the database on a server for us. Now when it is done, then we can now move on. Okay, so you can see from here that it's completed. So yeah, it's configured. So we can now click on close. So you can see from here, database is now connected. But there's one problem. You know, when we check our database, we have some migration file that was made already. And now with these migrations, we want to include it here. Maybe this migration may contain seedings and that's the default value that we want to set to our database and etc. So in such case, what can we do? We can now edit this and now apply this migration, which is going to take effect. And now all the data that we have in the database is going to also include it into the current or the new database that we have. So in such case, how can we work on this? We can do that by clicking on this more action and now click on this edit. 
So let's wait for it to finish discovering data context. So let's click on this drop down. That is the entity framework migrations and I click on this, apply this migration on publish. And now let's click on save. That's the only thing that we need to do. Now, after doing this, what you have to do here is to click on publish. So now let's publish our app and it's going to take um, some few minutes for this to be done. As you can see from here, it is checking if your application will run successfully. So you are publishing the application without bundling the, the runtime. So let's wait while they doing all this compatibility checking and this publishing aspect. So we have to sit and now wait for that. So you can see that web app was published successfully and you can see we have our URL over here and installing ASP call site extensions. So we wait for this to finish and automatically it's going to pop up a page for us. And that is where we have our API now. So let's wait for this to get loaded and I will see. You know, when we load the default API from the local, you can see you're not seeing this. You're not seeing page 404 that is not found. Now, if you check this, our API over here. So you can see from here, if I click on run this, this is going to run and the default page is going to be the swagger. But here, we are not seeing any swagger here. We are not seeing swagger here. We see only this. But with this and the API, if we, if we decide to navigate to any URL here, it's going to have that also. Now, let's see. So this is our swagger. You can see as soon as the page load, the API load, we have the interface here. And let's say uh, when we go to get users, so let's say get drivers. And if I click on try this out, you can see it's going to execute. And now we're going to have the route and maybe some content over here. Let's switch. So this is the, the driver that we have. And here we can actually go in there and now get this API or this driver so let's let's try that here and see so let's copy this and let's go back to our page here so in the api we paste this and we go for drivers and let's see we're going to have access to the driver that we have you know we have only one record and let's see if we're going to have that record in here okay so we are not having this record meaning that the record that we have in the database was not added to the database, but we can decide to post new data here. To do that, we have to get access to the swagger. So you can have access to this post. Now let's see how to do that. So let's go to our project. And in our project, we go to Solution Explorer. And now let's go for the program.ts file. So inside this use swagger under a development, use this swagger UI. Let's specify some parameters in it. And now in here, we're going to say that we're going to have this swagger, then maybe version one. And let's have this swagger.json. And in here, we are going to specify the name. So I'm going to say this is this part API, maybe V1, that's a version one. And also we let's terminate this. And now in here, so we're going to specify this in the middle of this Vega UI. So we can just have to cut this off. Let's cut this off and inside here, you can just use this configuration. Then we're going to extend it like that. So C dots, then you can have swagger endpoint. Now with this endpoint, we now specify this in the endpoint. Also at the end, we can also specify C dot now route prefix. And I want to send this to string 
dot empty so that as soon as we run the, the application we run our page we won't have that the page 404 right the error code so let's save this now let's stop this and now let's publish it again so I'll click come here and I'll click on publish Alright, so you see it is successfully published and it is navigating us to the same page again and now as you can see from here we have our swagger in our um, web api online so let's see let's try to get our employees to try this out and now let's see if you're going to have some employees in our database if not then we create a new one so when you load the page you're going to have this default one so you can see there's nothing here let's try to add driver here to this so I'll try this out and i'm going to execute this okay so successfully added now when we check for get drivers execute okay so you can see we have one driver here added so that is the 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 easiest way of deploying your web api and the database into azure uh, app service by using the visual studio i believe um, this video is okay thank you so much for watching please give me a thumbs up or if you like what i'm doing also check our playlist we have a lot of projects and lessons for you concerning blazer and .NET mario application development hopefully i'm going to catch you up in the next video